The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. <laughs> Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone offers you important evidence gathered in the tobacco country by the world-famous Crossley Pole. This evidence reveals the smoking preference of auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, the men who really know tobacco. Here's what the Crosley Poll found. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. These experts know their business. Their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike, we believe, has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies and to the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you may expect from fine tobacco. And when these veteran tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice for their own personal smoking enjoyment, then you know... L-S-M-F-T! L-S-M-F-T! Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as an emergency measure, at 2 o'clock this morning, the state of California went on daylight savings time, which means that in California, we started the day an hour earlier. This sudden change has even upset the barnyard animals. For this morning, when I opened my bedroom window at 5 o'clock, which was really 4 o'clock, I heard... What a shame. It's their first argument since they appeared on Bride and Groom. <laughs> Continue, Don. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the change of time has certainly been confusing. So now we bring you a man who gets five o'clock shadow with his four o'clock tea, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Betty talking, and Don, Don, what is the reason for this sudden change of time here in California? Well, Jack, because of the drought, there's been a power shortage, and the extra hour of daylight saves millions of kilowatt hours of electricity. Kilowatts? Yes. <laughs> yes, you see, we've had practically no rain, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate electricity. It is then run through the giant transformers in which it is converted into alternating current. And this current is sent throughout the state on a complicated network of cables. Well. <laughs> Imagine them going through all that trouble just so Rochester can burn my toast in the morning. <laughs> but Don... This drought has really been something. I don't ever remember it being so dry out. Well, listen, this you'll never believe. I mean, this sounds incredible. But it's been so dry. Last week, I passed a citrus grove, and I saw an orange sucking a lemon. <laughs> you know, the rain today nearly spoiled that joke. <laughs> you know, we nearly took it out. <laughs> But anyway, Don, I like the idea of broadcasting at 5 o'clock instead of 4 because it gives us more time. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, about... Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, about... Oh, did you just get here? Yeah. yeah, I heard you and Don talking about daylight savings time, and I'm in favor of it. Well, I'm glad you are, Dennis. You see, it, it gives us an extra hour of daylight every day. Yeah, I got up at 2 o'clock this morning, I turned my watch ahead 365 hours. <laughs> what? I'm set, I'm set for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad you made me repeat that, huh? <laughs> but Dennis, Dennis, look at me. I want to ask you one thing. Why do you have to be so silly? I mean, you, you're not a kid anymore. Look, you're approaching manhood. I am? <laughs> Certainly. And you have responsibilities. Look at Dennis, I really wanted to talk to you. Look, when I was your age, I was serious-minded, settled. I was supporting my family. 
I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning on a cold wintry day, pack my own lunch, and trudge 12 miles through the snow looking for work. Any kind of work. Selling papers, shoveling coal, digging ditches, anything. And at night, with the pennies I had earned clenched in my little fist... <laughs> Clenched in my little face. <laughs> I would drag my weary body home. And it was because of my efforts that my loved ones, my family, were able to keep body and soul together through that dreadful winter. What do you think of that? That was pretty good, but I still think they'll give it to Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Dennis, I was just telling you the story of my life. I wasn't trying to get an Academy Award. I didn't even make a picture, so I'm not eligible to win it. Oh, you're just being modest. I'm not being modest. I didn't make a picture last year. If I had made one, then I would be eligible to win the award. What a ham. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I don't know why I get into these things. Oh, speaking of pictures, Jack, I saw a great one last night. Really, Don, what'd you see? The Naked City. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> well, that does it. Mary, have you ever heard anyone so ridiculous? Mary, I'm talking to you. Jack, I don't come in till the next page. Well, come in now. I can't stand any more of this. <laughs> okay. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hey, fellas, <laughs> look who's here. Mary. Say, Jack. What? I'm all mixed up now. How come we're broadcasting at 3 o'clock instead of 4? We're not broadcasting at 3 o'clock. Look, it's 5 o'clock. You see, you're supposed to set your watch ahead. Ahead? Certainly. See, the idea is to get an extra hour of daylight, and the purpose of that is to conserve electricity. You see, there's been a drought, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate the electricity. It is then run through a giant... Ah, uh, uh, shut up! <laughs> Miss Stewart, you were employed on this program to read one line at the opening of the show, and that's all. I could have got a real chicken, but they wanted 90 cents a pound. <laughs> Now, please don't interrupt again. $643.70. Dennis, what are you figuring? Don Wilson at 90 cents a pound. <laughs> Dennis, go, Don, go sit on Dennis for a while so we can get on with the show, will you? Say, Jack, are you having the winner of the walking man contest on the program today? Yes, Mary. Ralph Edwards is going to bring her over later. Well, good, because I got a letter from Mom, and she says she's going to listen. Oh, a letter from your mother? Yeah. Here it is, right here. Well, what does the fearless Fosdick of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just a short note to tell you how thrilled we all were to find that Jack was the walking man yeah. when I heard the news. I got so excited that the cow is now wearing four Band-Aids. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> I should have realized Jack was the walking man as soon as I heard that clue where he played the violin. Oh. It sounded like a cat who already lost eight lives and didn't have a nickel to call Northside 777. <laughs> Mary, you, your mother can put a Band-Aid on that <laughs> gag, too. Right? So much for this Jack. This show was written in do wah diddy I think. <laughs> so much for Jack. Now, here's the latest family news. Your sister, babe, has been studying dramatics... And this Wednesday, she will have an important part in the annual St. Patrick's Day play. Oh, babe. The play will open with St. Patrick chasing Babe out of Ireland. <laughs> Say, Babe should be good in that part. She never did have hips, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, babe. This part doesn't give Babe any lines to read, but she'll have a chance to hiss back at the audience. Good, good. No other news except we had to take your Uncle Harry to a psychiatrist, as he thinks he's an avocado. <laughs> Every time I make a salad, he jumps in the bowl. What? <laughs> Once he did it without dressing. Mary. <laughs> salad dressing, that uh, is. Your Uncle Harry is really a character. I remember last year he thought he was a tube of shaving cream. Every time he left the house, he wanted you to screw his cap on. <laughs> what a guy. So we'll close now with all my love to you, your mother, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> now, come on, Dennis. It's time for your song. What are you going to sing? Well, since Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to sing McNamara's band. Good, good. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, 
me name is McNamara, I'm the leader of the band. Although we're few in numbers, we're the finest in the land. We play at wakes and weddings and at every fancy ball. And when we play to funerals, we play the march from Saul. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns, they blaze away. The clarity pops the old bassoon while I the pipes do play. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the fruit and the music, something grand. A credit to old Ireland is back the Maris Banner. <laughs> Right now we are rehearsing for a very swell affair. The annual celebration, all the gentry will be there. When the walking man to Ireland came, he took me by the hand. Says he, I never saw the likes of McNamara's band. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns, they blaze away. McCarthy pumps the old bassoon when I the pipes do play. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the fruit and the music, something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. <laughs> Oh, me name is Uncle Julius, and from Sweden I have come to play with McNamara's band and beat the big bass drum. And when they march along the street, the ladies tank come grand. They shout, there's Uncle Julius playing with an Irish band. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze the wind. McCarthy pumps the old bassoon while I the pipes do play. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the flute and the music, something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. Sure, it's the grandest band in the world, and if anybody doesn't agree with me, just to be sociable, I'll fight the best man in the house. <coughs> I'm not long for this world. <laughs> that was McNamara's band sung by that wee broth of a lad, Dennis Day. And Dennis, me by. Sure and be God, I'm proud of you, lad, as I am of me father, Shillelagh. But Dennis, seriously, I want to congratulate you and all the Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, and a good yontif to you, too. <laughs> what? So sein mit Glück, and ich will das ein später der Jarten der. Thank you, Dennis. And now... Oh, hold it, kids. Come in. Hey, Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm here to inform you that the results of Radio Mirror Magazine's nationwide poll have been tabulated, and you've won the title of America's favorite comedian. Well, thank you. Don't thank me. I voted for Mary's mother. <laughs> what? You're about as funny as an eviction notice. <laughs> Look, all right, you came here, you told me I won the award, now you can go. Yeah, just a minute. Is Don Wilson around? Why, yes. He... Hey, wait a minute. Ask me that again, will you? Yeah, I said, is Don Wilson around? He's not only around, but he's a firm and a fully packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, you may not be the walking man, but you step right into that one. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, mister, what are you doing? I'm setting my watch back an hour. I was happier then. <laughs> now may I see Mr. Wilson Oh, Don, come here a minute oh, yeah, Yes, what is it, Jack? Uh, Mr. Wilson, on behalf of Radio Mirror Magazine I want to congratulate you on being voted America's favorite radio announcer Little old me? Yes, little fat old you <laughs> uh, The plaque we're presenting to you reads First prize awarded to Don Wilson Because of perfect diction and flawless enunciation Well, gosh, who won second prize? Speedy Rig. <laughs> The Effie Boone will be heartbroken. Uh, now, Mr. Benny, yeah. while I'm here, I'd like to take some pictures of the lady who won the walking man contest. Well, Ralph Edwards was supposed to bring her over, and they're not here yet. I can't understand what's keeping them. I better call up and see. Say, Mabel, what is it, Gaitchev? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. I wonder what high button shoes wants now. <laughs> well, answer it and find out. I'm loosening my girdle. You answer it. Okay. Hello? Hello, Mabel. No, this is Gertrude. 
Right now, Mabel is loosening her... Gertrude! <laughs> Gerda, will you try to get me Ralph Edwards, please? Just a moment. He wants I should get him Ralph Edwards. It's a good thing he talked to you. I'd have hung up on him. Why? Why? Jack took me out once, and when we got home, he didn't even kiss me goodnight. I can't understand it. I even brought my lips up close to him like this. Well, no wonder he didn't kiss you. What? I've seen a better pucker on a closed laundry bag. <laughs> well, maybe it's because I don't paint my lips up so good. You know, it's hard with a thin brush. I think I'll start using a rubber stamp like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you gotta be careful. Once at the office, I was in a hurry to make up. I grabbed the wrong stamp and my lips said, fragile, this end up. <laughs> anyway, I don't care what you say, Mabel. To me, Mr. Benny has a very sweet personality. Well, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That's why you find so many things in fruitcake. <laughs> oh, that's a fine way to talk about Mr. Benny. Especially now that he's famous as a walking man. What's so wonderful about that? He was walking when Paul Revere was riding. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Ralph Edwards doesn't answer. All right, thanks. Jack, wasn't Ralph Edwards home? No, but we finally got to use that telephone routine we've been saving since Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Four times we rehearsed it and had to take it out. Huh? <laughs> anyway, Ralph will be down here. And Don, until he gets where he might as well... Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson. How you live? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Jackson, but this change of time got me all mixed up. Well, Phil, that's ridiculous. All you had to do was set your watch ahead an hour. Well, that ain't easy for me. You see, my watch has got four hands. Four hands? Sure. Here, I'll show it to you. Take a look at... How do you like that? I saw four hands last night. <laughs> That I can understand. Phil, are those your eyes, or are you trying to flag down a freight train? <laughs> anyway, the change of time is no excuse. You've been with me for 12 years, and not once have you been on time for rehearsal. Jackson, if you had a band as lousy as mine, you wouldn't even get here for the show. <laughs> well, Phil, now that you really admit that what your band sounds like, why don't you let them go? I can't, Jackson. Can't do it. I got to deal with Petrillo where I have to take all the in-between musicians. In-between musicians? Yeah, when they're through with Guy Lombardo and not quite ready for Forest Lawn, I get them. <laughs> What a combination, Guy Lombardo and Forrest Lawn. <laughs> Phil, Phil, who makes their arrangements? Digger Odell. <laughs> oh, stop with those jokes. What do you Wait. mean, jokes? There. Look what it says on the music. Where? Well, I'll be darned. May you rest 16 bars in peace. <laughs> Well, Phil, whether you like your orcs or not, we have to have a band number, so hit it, will you? <laughs> hey, what's that now? I just did that to wake up the audience. Well, Mr. Blank, you don't have to wake up the audience. You were hired just to do one crow at the opening of the program. You can go home now. But I'm talented. I can do a lot of things. Look, will a you A dog, a horse, a pig. Look, mister. <laughs> Look, I don't want all of them. I also imitate an electric organ. What? <laughs> Now, cut that out, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 Somebody let me know these things. <laughs> well, unclench your fist. <laughs> that was I'm looking over a four-leaf clover played by Phil Harris, and as Ireland must be heaven because you can't hear his music there, orchestra. <laughs> and now, folks... Oh, say, Jack, I'm a little worried. Ralph Edwards hasn't shown up yet. Well, he ought to be here any minute. Meanwhile, Don, let's have a commercial. Oh, I can't do a commercial because the quartet isn't here. The quartet isn't here? Why not? Well, you see... <laughs> What are you laughing at, Mary? The quartet couldn't be here because the baritone got married. 
Well, what about the other three guys? They tied their shoes to the back of his car and forgot to get out of them. <laughs> he should have tied that joke to the back of Fred <laughs> Allen. <laughs> well, Don, even though the quartet isn't here, we gotta have a commercial, so it's up to you to do it. Oh, but Jack, how am I gonna get laughs reading a straight commercial? Well... Listen to this. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Listen to what Mr. C. Burt Oliver, tobacco warehouseman of Lexington, Kentucky, says. I've been smoking Luckies for... Oh, it's no use, Jack. You can't get laughs that way. But you can, Don. You can. I'll show you. You read the same thing, and while you're reading it, I'll put this silly-looking straw hat on your head. Straw hat? Yeah, like the ones they wear in the magazine ads. Now, go ahead and read it again. Uh, and at a certain point, I'll put on the straw Okay, hat. okay. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Listen to what Mr. C. Burt Oliver, tobacco warehouseman of Lexington, Kentucky, says. Now, wait till I put on the hat. Now, now wait. <laughs> I've been smoking Luckies for nigh on to 20 years. Because I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike consistently. Fine, that's fine. That's naturally mild tobacco. Yes, sir. Why not? You bet. You all. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strikes are so round, so firm, so fully packed. That's it. So free and easy on the you straw. You see, there you are, Don. You see how easy it is to get. Not only that, it'll be great on television. You mean you're signing me up? No, not you, Don. Just the hat. <laughs> Hey, Jack. Jack, your guests have arrived. My guests? Yeah. Oh, good, good. I'll introduce them. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't often that we have guest stars on this program, and for a very good reason. They, they cost, cost money. money. Besides that. <laughs> but tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the master of ceremonies of radio's number one quiz show and the originator of the Walking Man contest. Here he is, Ralph Edwards. Hiya, Truth. Hello, Consequence. <laughs> well, Alf, I was worried that you wouldn't get here, so I called your house, but nobody answered. I can't understand it. Oh, but, Jack, there was nobody in my house, so my phone couldn't be answered. Funny, I thought does does everything. <laughs> uh, maybe it was in the washing machine at the time. Maybe, but I'm sure glad you got here, Well, Alf. so am I, Jack, because I want to take this opportunity of thanking you again for your splendid cooperation in the Walking Man contest, which raised over a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> To be exact, we raised almost... Whoops, whoops. Yes. Oh, two million. Oh, good. <laughs> and all this money, Jack, went to the American Heart Association. Well, that's certainly a worthy cause. Say, Ralph, do you mind if I ask you a question? I know, Mary. What is it? Well, in your four contests, Mr. Hush, Mrs. Hush, Miss Hush, and uh, Walking Mush, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mash, I mean, Mish, that, the, the Walking, walking Man. man. <laughs> total value of all the prizes given away? Oh, I'd say around a hundred thousand dollars. Gee. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, since I've been running these contests, I've been the happiest guy in the world. I only wish I could give more prizes. Gives me such a wonderful feeling, giving things away. Well, to each his own. <laughs> But, Ralph, Ralph, while you're on the subject uh, of money, don't you think I should receive something for my efforts on your program the last eight weeks? Well, Jack, I know it was for charity, Ralph, but for eight weeks I walked and walked and walked. Yeah, I know, Jack, and I have here a check for you for $6.30. $6.30? How'd you arrive at that figure? Uh, 15 cents for the first quarter mile and 20 cents a mile thereafter. <laughs> So that's why you strapped that meter on my back. If I'd have known that, I'd have taken longer steps, you know. Jack, I don't know. I, I should put on that straw hat for that yeah. joke, you know. <laughs> no, but I can't understand you at all. I always thought it was just a gag, but it, it seems the only thing you can think of is money. So what, Ralph? There's nothing wrong with liking money. Oh, but Jack, think of it this way. Money isn't everything. Supposing you were the only person in the whole world, and all the diamonds, all the wealth, all the gold was yours. Now, wouldn't you be lonely... Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> I'd be so nice to come home to. <laughs> well, I may as well get to the real reason for my being here today. I brought along as my special guest tonight 
Uh, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago. May I introduce her to you and your listeners? Certainly, Ralph. Go right ahead. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the winner of the Walking Man contest, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Hubbard, I want to welcome you to this program. Thank you, Mr. Benny. You know, I read in the paper that after you won the Walking Man contest, all your old friends, people you haven't heard from in years, came around to see you. That's right. Gee, that must have been thrilling. Who was the very first person to visit you after you won? The income tax man. <laughs> I'll bet, I'll bet after the income tax man got there, Mrs. Hubbard's cupboard was bare. For that, I left Chicago. <laughs> hmm. Tell us, Mrs. Hubbard, uh, how did you discover that Jack was the walking man? It was simple. The footsteps were familiar. You mean you've heard his footsteps before? No, but I realized they were made by a person around my own age. <laughs> Now, just a second, uh, Mrs. Hubbard, uh, how, how old are you? Thirty-nine. <laughs> Thirty-nine? Gee, you look a little older. I am, but, <laughs> but they gave me a new birth certificate as one of the prizes. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> You know, this is really quite a coincidence. I happen to be 39 years old myself. Really? What contest did you win? <laughs> no, no contest. You see, that's really my age. But you look much... Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hubbard, uh, remember you're a guest here. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, Mrs. Hubbard, tell me, were you born in Chicago? Uh, no, I was born in the South. Really? Where? A little place called Duwad Ditty. No. Well, Mrs. Hubbard, now that you've had all this good luck, I suppose you'll be thinking of getting married again, huh? Won't you? No. Now that I've all these prizes, I feel that I don't need anyone. But, but won't you be lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> Independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. That's the face I am not a little, 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 American. That statement is backed up by an impartial Crosley poll just completed in 11 southern tobacco states. This poll, taken among tobacco experts, reveals the smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Yes? For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. These are the experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And we believe their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what Mr. Fred Evans, a veteran tobacco buyer for 25 years, recently said. At every auction I've attended, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe, mellow tobacco. I've smoked Lucky's 19 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Ralph Edwards and Mrs. Hubbard for being with us today. Mrs. Hubbard appeared to the courtesy of uh, Carson Peary and Scott. <laughs> also on our program tonight were Mel Blank, Frank Nelson, B. Benadaret, Sarah Berner, Blanche Stewart. I appeared to the courtesy of Penicillin tonight. Good night, folks. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>